this video, we're going to go over the most recent topic that you learned, which is interior and exterior angles of polygons. So just a review of some vocabulary. An interior angle is an angle formed by two sides of a polygon with a common vertex. So basically, an interior angle is inside the shape. A convex polygon is a polygon in which all of the diagonals lie in the interior of the polygon. You can also think of it as a polygon who has interior angles that are all less than 180 degrees. A concave polygon is a polygon in which all of the diagonals do not lie in the interior of the polygon. We can also think of it as a polygon that has at least one interior angle that is greater than 180 degrees. In regular speech, we can describe a concave polygon as one that goes in or has like, it gets pushed in at some point, one that doesn't just connect. As you can see here, we have a concave polygon and it kind of is pushed in. It doesn't just connect from piece to piece. So that's another way of thinking of it in just like simple terms. Um, when we have a triangle, we know already from talking about triangles a lot, that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. And in your class, when you first started learning about triangles, you probably proved that that fact is true. That anytime you have a triangle, if you take all three interior angles and put them together, it makes 180 degrees. Now, when we have a quadrilateral, a four-sided shape, we can divide a quadrilateral into two triangles using a diagonal. And since each triangle has angles that add up to 180 degrees, and there's two triangles here, 180 and 180 make 360 degrees. Now, when we have a five-sided shape, a pentagon, if I start at one of the diagonals, one of the ver vertices, I should say, and I draw as many diagonals as I can from that one vertex, I see that I can break down a five-sided shape into three different triangles. And once again, since each triangle has angles that add to 180 degrees, and there's three triangles here, that's a total of 540 degrees in the five-sided shape. 180 times three is 540. And last but not least, we have a six-sided shape. Same thing, gonna start at one of the vertex points. And I'm gonna draw in as many diagonals as I can. And I see here that I have four triangles that are formed. And once again, since each of the triangles has angles that adds to 180 degrees, and there are four triangles here, 180 times four is 720. So all of the angles in a six-sided shape add up to 720 degrees. Now notice, that as we increase in number of sides, the number of triangles also increases. And the way that we can summarize the number of triangles in each of the shapes is n minus 2. For example, there's four sides in a quadrilateral. n would be 4, the number of sides. So we can divide into two triangles. Five-sided shape, n would be 5. 5 minus 2 is 3. That's how many triangles. Six-sided shape, n would be six. Six minus two, that's four. That's how many triangles that there are. And that's where we get our formula for some of the measures of the interior angles of a polygon. The formula is to find how many degrees all of the interior angles add up to in any polygon, n minus two times 180. That's what we got from looking at the examples here, and we can apply that to any shape. For example, if we have a 20-sided shape and we want to know what all of the interior angles need to add to in our 20-sided shape, we can plug in 20 for n, 20 minus 2, multiply that by 180, and then we get what all the angles should add up, all the interior angles. Let's try out some examples. We're going to find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of each of the below polygons. So let me get my calculator ready as well for this. So plugging into our formula, n minus 2 times 180. An octagon, n would be 8, so we have 
eight minus two times one hundred and eighty degrees. That's six times one hundred and eighty degrees, and that is one thousand and eighty degrees. Here we have a decagon. So once again, plugging into our formula, n minus two times one eighty, we have ten minus two times one hundred and eighty. A decagon is a ten-sided shape. That's eight times one hundred and eighty, and that is. 1440 degrees. An 18 gone, that's an 18 side. 18 minus 2 times 180, that's 16 times 180. And we get that all of the angles in this 18 sided shape should add up to 2880 degrees. Moving along, they're giving us this time the sum of the interior angles. And we need to figure out how many sides the shape has. So I know that in my formula, n minus 2 times 180, this is to find the sum of all of the interior angles. But this time, I know what this is equal to. I know that the sum of all the interior angles is 1,980. And I need to solve for n for the number of sides. So I'm going to start off by just dividing both sides by 180. So let me do that on my calculator. Divide 180. And I get that n minus 2 is equal to 11. So n is equal to 13. A 13 sided shape has angles that add up to 1980. I'm going to do the same thing here to find out the number of sides that are in a shape that has angles that add up to 2340. Starting off the same way going to divide both sides by 180. I have n minus 2 is equal to 13. So n is equal to 15. A 15 sided shape has angles that add up to 2340. And then finally, one more to go. The sum of the angles is 5400. Dividing both sides by 180. I have that n minus 2 is equal to, let's see, divide by 180, I get 30. Let me just move this down so you can actually see. So I have n is equal to 32, and there we go. Okay, let's try some more examples. Let's solve for x. So this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5-sided shape. So plugging into my formula, n minus 2 times 180. My n is 5, and 5 minus 2 is 3, times 180 is 540 degrees. So all of these angles together should make one 540 degrees. Let me make an equation that says that. x plus 2x plus 94 plus 120 plus 131 all together should add up to 540 degrees. Let me super quickly combine my like terms. I have x. Let me add up 94. 120 and 131, and that is 345. Really quickly, let me subtract 345 from both sides and divide by 3. And I get that x is equal to 65. So here we have solved for x. Over here, we have a hexagon, and using our formula, n minus 2 times 180, n is 6, so 4 times 180 is 720, so that's what all of the angles of this hexagon add up to. So I know that all the angles, the 4x, the 128, the 3x, the 117, the 142 and the 2x should all together make 720 degrees. I'm going to quickly combine my like terms 4x and 3x, that's 7x, and 2x, that's 9x. Now let me combine the numbers. I have 128 plus 117 plus 142, and that is 387. Let me subtract. 387 from both sides, so that is 720 minus 387, and then let me divide by 9, and I get 
the x is equal to 37. It's asking here for the measure of the largest interior angle. So let me plug in and see what the largest would be. So let me do 4 times 37, and I got 148. I know that one has to be the biggest because it's bigger than the ones that we were given so far. And 4 times x has to be bigger than 3 times x or 2 times x. So 148 degrees is the largest interior angle in this hexagon. Now let's talk a little bit about what a regular polygon is. So a regular polygon is both equilateral and equiangular. It has all equal sides and all equal angles. So here we have a triangle. And if it's regular, that means it's equilateral, where all the sides and all the angles are equal. And we know that in an equilateral triangle, all angles should equal 60 degrees. We can also do 180 divided by 3 to figure out that each of these angles is 60 degrees. Here we have a four-sided regular polygon, which would be a square, all equal sides and all equal angles. And if we didn't remember that squares have all 90 degree angles, we could do four divided, sorry, 360, the total sum of the angles divided by four, and we get 90 degrees for each of the angles. In a regular pentagon, all of the sides would once again be equal. And if we wanted to find what each of the angles is, we could do 540 divided by five, and that gives us 108 for each of the interior angles. And here we have a six-sided shape, a hexagon, and if it's regular, once again, that means all of the sides are equal. Since all of the angles are equal and all of the angles add to 720, we can divide by the number of sides, six, and we can get that one angle is 120. So each interior angle of this hexagon, if it's regular, would be 120 degrees. So Here's a note here at the bottom. Let me just scroll down so you can see it. You can find the measure of a single angle in a regular polygon by finding the sum of its interior angles and dividing that sum by the total number of angles or sides in the polygon. So that's exactly what we did up here to find each angle in the regular polygon. We took the total sum. For example, in the pentagon, the total sum of the angles was 540 degrees. And since we know that all the angles are the same, we divided by five, which is n and we got what each angle should equal to. We can try that again in the examples below. We want to find the measurement of one angle of an octagon. So we're going to find the total sum of all of the angles. And we know that these are regular polygons, so that means all the angles are equal. So we're going to divide by the number of angles that there are. So n here would be 8. So that's 6 times 180 divided by 8. And that is 135 degrees for each of the interior angles. For the nonagon, n is 9. So that's 7 times 180 divided by 9. And we have 140 degrees for each of the angles. And here n is 18. So we have 16 times 180 divided by 18. So we have 160 degrees for each of the angles. We're going to find the measurement of one interior angle of a regular polygon with an interior angle sum of 2520. So First, we have to figure out how many sides and angles this polygon has. So we know that the sum of the interior angles is equal to 2,520. So let's divide by 180 on both sides. And we have n minus 2 is equal to 14. So n is equal to 16. Now that we know that there are 16 sides and angles, what we can do is we can divide the total sum of the angles by the number that there are, and we can figure out what each angle should be equal to. So let me divide by 16, and I get 157.5 degrees. Okay, next one. If an interior angle of a regular n-gon, that means we don't know how many sides it has, 
has an angle measure of 144 degrees, find how many sides it has. Find the value of n. So we know that one of the angles is 144. So we know that whatever the sum of the angles was divided by the number of angles that there are is equal to 144. So let me multiply n on both sides. So I have n minus 2 times 180 equals to 144n. Now I'm going to divide by 180 on both sides. So I have n minus 2 is equal to, let me do 144 divided by 180. Okay, and now I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So I have n. And then finally, subtracting the term with the n. Let me move over here so I have some more room. And then if I factor out the n, the last thing I want to mention before this video is over is that when we have exterior angles of any polygon, no matter what polygon it is, the angles always add to 360 degrees. So as you can see here, no matter how many sides it has, if you take angle one, two, three, four, and five, all the outside angles and you add them together, you always get 360 degrees. We can try a couple of examples. Let's do two of them. This video doesn't go on forever, but all of the exterior angles should add up to 360 degrees. So that's 4x, 5x, 92, plus 98, plus 15, that's 205. Let me subtract 205 from both sides. And I have x is equal to 31. Over here, same thing. Even though it has different number of sides, it's a triangle. If I add all of the exterior angles together, I should always get 360 degrees. Let me combine my like terms. That's 5x. And here I have 88 plus 8 minus 16, so that's plus 80, is equal to 360. 360 minus 80, and then divide by 5, I have x is equal to 56. And I realize this one over here from before is much easier if you distribute the 180 first before you divide. If we distribute the 180, we have 180n minus 60. And then if we subtract the terms with the n to put them both on the same side of the equal sign, we have negative 360 is equal to 144 minus 180. That is negative 36n. And then if we divide both sides by negative 36, negative 360 divided by negative 36 is 10. So that's a much easier way to see that this was a 10-sided figure here. So I wanted to go back to that. A 10-sided figure have each angle measurement as 144 degrees. So even though in the previous ones we were starting off by dividing by 180, since this one had an n in the denominator, it actually makes our life easier to distribute the 180.